All right, what's up, everybody? It's been a while. I feel pretty rusty making a video, not gonna lie. So over the past week, I would have liked to upload, but I'm working on a project that's kind of involved with the home gym. More on that later. And my cat just happened to chew through my laptop charger, so I didn't have a way to actually upload videos to YouTube anyways. So now that all of that is resolved, I have an analogy that I want to go over with you guys about lift rotations. Lift rotations was probably the, one of the more confusing things, if not the most confusing thing to be in my first few years of lifting. And I think if I had a better understanding of this from the start, I would have had a better perspective to therefore make better gains and actually understand why you rotate lifts, why you don't, and when to do it. So when it comes to lift rotations, the analogy that I want to use today to give you guys a better comparison is going to just be to a lifespan of a person. And it actually, it draws a pretty decent comparison. And I'll dive into each like chapter of life and a, a kind of the chapter in the lifespan of a lift itself. So the lifespan of a lift, today we're comparing the lifespan of a lift to the lifespan of a person and trying to find the balance of living a fun YOLO life, but also making it to old age without missing out on all the good aspects of life. So you can be that YOLO person that does a, makes a bunch of bad decisions, dies very young. Obviously, we don't want that because that's not productive for gains. And you'll, you'll understand that more as I go on in the video. But you also don't want to be the person that made it to 95 but regrets everything that they did in their life because they have no memories and no friends or whatever. So you want to find that happy medium where you can have the gains, but you can also have the the, the good long lifespan because at the end of the day, making gains is an accumulation over time. So you kind of need both and you have to find that balance. So let's go over childhood. And this is of course, when you're first starting out with a lift, I think it's comparable to your childhood age zero to 18, because it, you're not directly making progress in life, but you're getting you're getting the beginning out of the way. You have to kind of learn the ropes of how life works. And then once you're actually an adult, you can start making progress. You can start making money, doing what you actually want to do. And it's the same thing with a lift. And especially some more complex lifts, they have a longer like childhood phase where you're not directly getting that much, but indirectly you're setting yourself to make, you're setting yourself up to make good gains moving forward. So with the childhood, this is essentially the noob gains of that lift when you're setting yourself up to be able to use that lift for its lifespan. This is a necessary part of most lifts lifespans. Of course, there's nuance here, like a Romanian deadlift is not the same as an incline dumbbell curl when it comes to complexity and the childhood phase. But it is necessary to get to the productive muscle growth to go through this beginner phase. And you want to avoid the exercise selection ADHD or the program hopping mentality or you'll be stuck in this phase forever and you're just going from one childhood phase to another so if you finally change out if you finally learn how to use that lift and then you just change it out as soon as you actually learn it and the gains slow down because you think you can just rotate a lift and keep progressing on that real quick that's a mistake you're not actually getting to the productive part of that lift so this is a mindset that I like to take uh, when I'm rotating lifts. So you will be stuck in that phase forever if you keep rotating lifts and program hopping. It's a good way to feel good because the constant novelty and the ability to make strength gains 24 seven, but this is unproductive. So if I'm learning how to RDL for the first time, and as soon as the gains start to slow down on paper, like as soon as my strength numbers start to slow down a bit, I'm like, oh, I'm plateaued, let me change out lifts. That's a misapplication and a misunderstanding of rotating lifts because right now you're just getting to that good part of actually making gains. The previous gains have just been from learning that lift to put it simply, I'm not gonna get too sciencey on you today. So you want to make sure once you get out of that childhood phase, you actually keep that lift for the lifespan. Like as soon as you turn 18, you're not like, oh, I can't wait to be zero again, let's restart. No, you want to go into your adult life and actually reap the benefits of what life has to offer. When it comes to the adulthood of a lift, so this is this is the big part. This is what you want to 
find that balance in. This is where you want to stay the longest for most lifts. This is the most productive time period of a lift in your program. You know how the lift works and you're consistently making gains from it. You can draw comparisons between the risk factors of lifts and life here too. Some lifts are higher risk of physical injuries and fatigue buildup, but their lifespan will be more comparable to someone that lives with that like YOLO mentality. In this phase of a lift, it's, it's nothing too exciting, it's nothing too flashy, but generally what it looks like in most cases is you have a lift, it's slowly trending upwards, of course, primarily if you're on a, a proper bulk, if you're cutting, that's a different story, that's a whole different video, but most of these lifts should be generally trending up. Maybe that's adding a rep to a set, two sets, three sets, whatever you're doing, generally trending up, then maybe you hit whatever progression model you're you're after and your technique's not perfect so you do a technique reset then you keep adding a couple more reps it's a good general trend you're kind of fighting mini plateaus here and here and there cleaning up technique as you go but overall this you don't have any problems you're kind of just doing the lift it's not that complex you're just continuing to train properly with this lift and it's really the like the retirement phase that is the most important to understand in my opinion because this is where people actually get things wrong most of the time. So there is a mistake after that initial childhood phase where people rotate their lifts out way too soon. That's a mistake a lot of people make, but there's also that other side of the spectrum where maybe people keep a lift in longer than it should be in their program for, or they rotate it out too soon when all it really took was a couple manipulations to keep that lift in your program properly. So this is probably the, the more important part of the video, in my opinion. So when it comes to the retirement phase, there are a few causes of a lift to get towards that retirement phase. So it's not necessarily just time itself. I want you guys to get this out of your mindset. If, you, if you're like, all right, well, I've had this lift in my program for eight weeks, it's probably time to move it out. Honestly, just forget about that. Of course, it, there's sometimes like time can be a good indicator if, if it's time to move a lift out of your program, I have a, a method on my own program where I track how long or what week I started doing this lift in. But at the same time, if a lift has been in my program for three weeks or 30 weeks, it doesn't play that big of a factor in if I should rotate it or not. It will in certain situations, but if a lift has been in your program for a while, it's not necessarily a bad thing. Like there's certain lifts I've been doing for two years at this point, and they're still doing perfectly fine. Um, so when it comes to retirement, typically it will have certain factors correlated with the time. And this is typically going to be nagging pains or minor injuries, a loss of mind muscle connection, and occasionally uh, an actual plateau. So unlike real life, and this is the cool thing about this, there are actually ways to bring back lifts into their youth, back to the adulthood. And this is done through programming based on the issues that you're running into. So this is the one fault in the analogy. I guess the way I see it is it's an exception that I think lifts have. And just because you're running into a plateau or just because you're running into a nagging pain or injury, I'd say in most cases, you can keep that lift in your program much longer. If you keep rotating through lifts, you're going to run out of lifts eventually, unless you're running some type of cycle. But the way I see it is you want to milk lifts out. You want to keep them in your program as much as you can. And this is done through programming. So if, if you have no reason to adjust the program, don't adjust it. But when you run into, when you run into situations where you, most people just randomly rotate that lift out i think it's better to take a look at the program and take a look at the issue that you're running into and why you want to rotate that lift out and then you can draw a better conclusion of what to actually do with that lift so a couple examples that i have one is going to be decreasing volume if you're not recovering anymore so sometimes when volume gets too high we have a hard time recovering maybe we've got a little bit too greedy with how many sets we want to do on a lift and if we're not progressing or we're kind of plateauing, the lift feels a bit stale. Sometimes we're just doing too much volume. Maybe it's too much frequency and we have to tone it down and relearn the intensity or just keep the intensity the same and just do a little bit less volume. So yeah, maybe it's not as much raw force and muscle damage put into one session, but you're actually able to build off each other and you can train your sessions in a proper sequence and build off of each other and build muscle that way. 
it's not too useful just having one great session if you can't repeat it. Another example would be doing like a de-volume phase. So slashing your volume down to maybe one or two sets per lift for a few days or a week if fatigue is high. So this is another thing where if you think a lift is tiring you out, maybe just try cutting back on volume for a little bit or just switching to a lower volume on that lift in general. Again, it depends on your program. I can't answer these direct questions that you have, but these are examples that I use in my own training. Another example is increasing frequency in a, when you're in a plateau and you already have high-ish volume on that lift. So if you have two days and you're hitting, say, a muscle group with four, five, six, seven, eight sets in that session already, maybe the best thing to do is add in frequency and maybe hit that lift instead of once a week, hit it twice a week. In certain cases, depending on the lift, maybe hit the lift three times a week and just build momentum and keep building up that way. There's all sorts of different ways that you can actually keep a lift in your program. And this is all to avoid what comes after retirement, which would eventually be death. And as morbid as that is to actually put that into the analogy, I think it makes the most logical sense. Death is, of course, something you want to avoid at all costs. And you generally can in lifting. Of course, there's a time and place for lift rotations. That's why it's a thing, of course. So the thing is you want to push that death back as far as you can. So when it comes to this, a, a death of a lift is a hardcore plateau which I'd argue in most cases isn't through the lift itself, it's through an outside factor, like your diet or how hard you're training or your program. But with that being said, of course, plateaus are a real thing. Even if you're training and doing everything else properly, sometimes you actually just have to rotate. And at that point, you can accept it. Another thing would be like a moderate to severe injury. You might start to see some of those signs in that retirement phase. And those those are good indicators that something needs to change before you get to that death. So whether it's a rotation or a manipulation of your program, you want to keep that lift in as long as you can without quite getting to that death. But occasionally it's going to happen. A plateau is in the end of the world. You can just rotate from there. Uh, a moderate to severe injury, that's something you do want to avoid. And of course, with lifting, um, I think that is something that you can't avoid entirely forever. But you can do a pretty good job of risk management there. So with that being said, that's all I've got for the video. Let me know if you have any questions.